all Kohler Courage engines have the same part that fails and it's going to create huge oil leaks all over your engine. The only visible part of this is this actual right here connected to your air box, that black rubber hose. This is the breather hose. It goes underneath that intake manifold, runs over right around this vicinity right here and connects into a metal cap. They call the breather housing that's attached to your engine block. And this is the problem, this hose right here. I'm gonna show you an up close view of this assembly disassembled and you'll see the bottom of that hose on the right is where that attachment is to the breather your air box that I just showed you. The other end of that hose attaches to that oval metal cap that I just talked about in the large hole. It's held in place with silicone to the engine block and a concave washer and a nut with silicone around the stud holding it to the engine block. What has happened is that hose that you see on the right has gotten soft from the oil vapor running through it and the engine vacuum has caused it to completely collapse. This causes us to sh shut off our ventilation system to our engine causing in just a few minutes for that crankcase to pressurize and start to push oil out of every seal on it. You're going to leak oil from the O-ring of your your uh, oil dipstick, the O-ring of your oil filter adapter, your valve covers, your governor shaft. You're going to really leak oil out of your crankshaft really bad. And the worst place it's going to leak most of all is right there underneath that metal cap. It's the weakest spot and that engine pressurize that blows that silicone out and it's never going to reseal itself. We have to reseal this cap and we have to replace that hose. Okay. Now, once you do all that, does not mean you're going to be not have any oil leaks anymore. Okay. Coming back here to my engine, I still have a small oil leak in the front on my oil pan seal. Okay. That pressurization has just broken the seal. It's never going to reseal again. And I still have a pretty decent, after two hours of driving, I still have a pretty decent crankshaft oil seal leak. So I, I still have more work to do. But prior to fixing that hose and resealing that cap, this entire frame would have been soaked. I mean, completely soaked with oil with that amount of driving on it. I mean, soaked, soaked, guys. It would have been dripping off everywhere. My belts would have been soaked everything. So the only way you're going to inspect to have this problem, which you probably do, is to remove this engine cover. Go grab an 8 millimeter and a 10 millimeter socket. We'll pull this off and just a couple seconds and then I'll show you what to look for so the eight millimeter takes off the two clamps and the two bolts off of each side of the cover and also the two bolts in the back and a 10 millimeter takes off the two front bolts and the two bolts holding your fuel pump on take all those off please and then all you do is lift the engine oh we also have to unhook the fuel line from this little clamp right here like this that, and then it comes right off. Real simple, okay? Now, now we can finally see what we're after, which is the other end of that hose and that metal cap I just showed you earlier. Looks like there's some trash down in there already. How about that? Anyhow, you can see that the cap has all been resealed. You see the silicone that's been pressed out all around it and also underneath that washer. And Here's going to be a picture of what mine looked like after I removed all the big trash. And you can see what an oily, disgusting mess. This is a straight on view with the intake manifold removed. And you can see this thing's been leaking for a long time. Most of that oil just baked onto the front of the engine before it ever got to the bottom and showed up as a leak. Then eventually just then turned into a massive leak, all from leaking underneath that cap. Now, if you look underneath here and you don't see all that big mess, congratulations, you feel, make yourself feel lucky there. But you still need to inspect this hose very carefully. It runs up and underneath that intake manifold. And as you can see, look how close it also runs to the cylinder head. I mean, all that oil vapor softens this thing up and then the heat from the cylinder head just destroy it. And look, 
this thing is just so soft it's not a reinforced hose which is really the biggest problem it really ticks me off that they couldn't spend an extra three bucks in putting a reinforced hose here in a spot that they know is going to need it instead they use a cheap piece of crap so i actually have intentions of trying to modify this you can buy that new cap nut and washer it's only like two or three bucks probably cost you three times that much to get it shipped to your house but i'm gonna buy one of those and i'm gonna attempt to find a, uh, the correct size 90 degree barb fitting and attach it to that cap and you can imagine in your mind something looking like this sticking out and I'm gonna do the same thing over here. All I need is a 90 degree that with a small piece of hose here, I can come out with another bar fitting facing this direction. And then I can go pay $2 to go into the junkyard and find me a, some type of, basically a U-shaped pre-molded hose, okay? That I know is gonna be a reinforced hose. I don't care what fluid it's carrying in a car, all the heat, they don't put nothing in the car that's not reinforced. And, you know, picture in your mind something like this with a lot more bend in it. And also cut the lengths. But of a reinforced hose that I can connect to those two barb fittings. And never ever have to worry about this stupid hose collapsing again and causing all this damn problem, man. Because now i got to reseal the whole oil pan and put a new crankshaft seal. And that just sucks. All because I use a cheap hose. Damn it. All right, so the only way you're gonna get to this is to remove your intake manifold, all right? It's really not that hard. The simplest way is gonna remove the four bolts and basically leave almost everything intact. You're probably gonna have to disconnect these two coil wires, either that or disconnect your wiring harness from the intake manifold, including you know, which is just un unhooking it from here. It's not hooked to anything on the intake. And I'm hooking this wire going to your fuel shutoff solenoid on the bottom of your carburetor. This unplugs right here is the connection. You remove the little bit of wiring. I think you can do it by just removing the two coil wires and just move this assembly um, out of the way enough. If you want to take it off completely, you're going to have to disconnect these linkages that are down here on the bottom here okay for your choke and your throttle all right you can give a close-up view do you see how those look there and there you also have to be real careful of how they're attached to your carburetor and make sure you don't they fall off real easy and they're a little bit cumbersome knowing how to reattach and once we get the intake out of the way we have to take obviously that off and clean every single bit of the old silicone off of the engine itself and the bottom of that cap what i found is those caps are extremely slick on the bottom so that means that the rtb is just not going to stick really well and i took some 150 cent grit sandpaper just a sheet of it and took that cap and just rubbed the bottom of that on that sandpaper for just a couple minutes not long and roughened it up and then cleaned it all really well with some acetone brake cleaner something like that make sure both these surfaces are really clean and make sure we follow directions of that silicone which will tell you to assemble these parts while the silicone is still wet and then wait finger tight and then wait one hour before completely tightening it okay i guarantee you when the factory built this engine they put that silicone in, tighten that nut down, and sent it out the door. All right, we're going to try to make sure we seal this as best we can. And so we want to make that silicone seal. This is the worst leak it's going to be. Let's make sure we do our best with that seal. And like I said, I'm going to come up with a better way for this stupid hose, man. This thing's going to fail again. I know it is. It's only a matter of time. Probably only lasts a few years before it failed the first time. So... This is your whole problem, guys, and this is where you got to get to to fix it. Until you fix this, it's almost pointless to fix any other oil leak on the engine because it's going to keep forcing it out anyway. So, sorry to be so lengthy with this, but this is super important for anybody with one of these engines. And I uh, hope this helps you out solve why your engine is leaking so much oil. Thanks, everybody, for watching.